Hello everyone, and welcome back to X-Wing. So, I know I said I wasn't going to record any of the uh, training ground things, but I figured at least one person might want to see them, so I went ahead and did it. And because these things take forever, this took 57 minutes and some seconds for me to do slowed down, um, I decided I'd use the most accurate craft, the Y-Wing. Now, as you're going to see here in a second... This thing is huge. I mean, you can tell by the number of gates there on the display, but this place is absolutely massive, and the fact that you have to go through it eight times is the reason why it takes so long. It's fairly simple. All you have to do is go through the gates and destroy as many of the laser turrets as you possibly can. Um, the only thing that changes in between rounds is the amount of time that you start with, the layout of the gates, as in which kind that they use. You can see that in the second round they introduce two different kinds, and the number of turrets and how accurate they are. So in the first couple you can see time kind of tight, um, but every, eh, every time you t destroy a turret it gives you two extra seconds, which especially for something as slow as the Y-Wing is vital. Now, I'm not sure if you could tell there, but I ran into the platform because I was being an idiot. Uh, the nice thing is, is that it doesn't damage you, but it will bring you completely to a stop and make you accelerate up to speed again, which, if you're not paying attention, can really, you know, completely end it for you. But it's not terribly difficult. It's just incredibly tedious, and especially with this round, as you can see, I was really crunched for time at the end. And this one, you only start with 30 minutes, but every single platform has six turrets to destroy. So, when I was doing this in the X-Wing, it was very difficult. I think I had to try two different times, um, just because... None of the four cannons are really centered. You kind of have to move off-center for them to hit the target. Whereas with the Y-Wing, you have the chin-mounted cannons, so you can hit whatever's in front of you without any difficulty. Except... Okay, so in the last episode, I said that my joystick's crappy null zone would probably not be a source of rage for me. Uh... There's a reason that I said probably, because there were times during this for the three craft I've done it for so far just made me want to scream. Because I was either pressed for time or there was a turret shooting me in the face, and I just was not having any of it. You'll notice now that I have more time and fewer targets to shoot, but the thing is, is that from round five on to the last one, each turret becomes more accurate. And if you're not good at managing your shield power and your laser power, then you could probably go down here. But, as you can see, I managed to do it, I mean, without too much trouble. They do throw in a nice little twist on the last one, which I've slowed down for you. Um, it's kind of wicked, really, because you think everything is going fine, and then all of a sudden, your shields are lower than you wanted them to be. And I ran into the platform again. I was probably scratching my head or something, or adjusting the headset, because I don't normally have a control issue. So, I want to explain real quick the reason for the title of this episode. Not only did I uh, completely lose my train of thought, um, so it's called I Done Goofed, because when I was recording the audio during the mission, I completely neglected to check whether or not my microphone was muted. So, in the mission part up here, I am talking the entire time, but I 
you can't hear anything that I'm saying. So, <laughs> I'm going to be narrating over that as well. Uh, the other reason is something that you'll find out later in this video. But I wanted to explain right now, if things don't seem right, that it's because I failed very hard and I'm trying to make up for it without scrapping the video because I really don't want to go and record that again. Well, yeah, you know. So anyway, this is the uh, Trixie trick I was talking about. They place turrets so that they're facing from behind. So again, just keeping you on your toes with shield management. But anyway, so th this whole thing, which has only taken about six minutes, took me an, almost an hour to do, and I'm so glad I don't have to do it again. This is Red Leader. Excellent. You're ready for combat. All right, and there's there's my stat sheet. So let's move on. But real quick, before I actually jump into the mission, I want to show you what I've been doing in my free time since the last episode. So I've done the first four of each of the combat simulator missions. Um, pretty self-explanatory for each craft, including the B-Wing, which are those four patches. The fifth and sixth for the B-Wing are incredibly difficult. Oh yeah, and I've done the training ground for all except the B-Wing, so I guess I do have to do it one more time. But only one more time! Then I never have to do that BS ever again. So... Let's just go ahead and get right into it. You may proceed. We'll let Mr. Akbar. Our fleet is evacuating all of our forces from the base at Bridget. Do his thing here. Two X-Wings from Red Squadron will fly cover for the evacuation. Several shuttles are carrying the most important personnel. Gold Squadron's Y-Wings will provide close escort for the shuttles. Help the Y-Wings protect the shuttles until they can hyperspace. Our fleet is evacuated. So essentially what's going on here is that my recon mission last time uncovered that there's this operation that they're launching against us called Strike Fear with the Star Destroyer Invincible at the head. So what we're doing here is essentially evacuating our first secret base. Well, maybe not the first, but evacuating our secret base and we have all of our important people on the shuttles and we need to protect them. Seems fairly simple. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite starts to any mission because if you don't pay attention and you don't move out of the way, that frigate will run you down. So, seems nice and easy. All we have to do is stay by the shuttles and Again, pardon my frantic targeting. It's just the way I like to get uh, get my bearings and keep an eye on the situation. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. Oh, there it is. And those transports in that Corvette are very close to that Star Destroyer. So you can obviously tell from my R2 unit freaking out that uh, they're toast. So, fairly straightforward at this point. All we have to do is... Uh, keep those ties off of the shuttles. There's no way anybody could screw that up, except by having terrible accuracy. 
Uh, if I keep doing this, that's going to be my running joke, is that my accuracy is the worst thing about this about my playthrough of this game. Besides my commentary when I can't think of what to say, because that's unfortunately a problem I have sometimes. I'm suspecting that these bombers have missiles that they're going to launch at the shuttles, which would be why I go after them more than I would the fighters. And it doesn't hurt any that the bombers are a lot easier to hit, too. But, you know, right there, I'm having to deal with... Oh yeah, I have a fighter on my butt, but I also had the Star Destroyer firing at me. Because, you know, I was kind of close to it, and that's never a good idea if you want to live for very long. More missing, firing and missing, firing and missing. I was talking to one of my buddies when I was doing the uh, training ground for the X-Wing, and I kept yelling in rage that I couldn't hit anything. And he said, are you sure you're not a stormtrooper? So I think I might actually be a stormtrooper because unless it's something that is really hard to miss, like a freighter, or a container, or a Star Destroyer, I have a very hard time hitting it. I mean, it might help if I didn't use uh, quad fire, but hitting things individually with the X-Wing's cannons is not easy. Especially if it's something that's moving quickly and erratically, like a uh, TIE Fighter. So... I don't really care about my accuracy anyway, I mean, it will lower my score, but it, I don't care about points all that much, just that I don't lose them. So I let a couple fighters, or at least one, slip by me, and I redirected all my laser power to try and catch up to it, but... It isn't going to work out too well for me because... Well, uh, wait for it. There it is! One of our shuttles has been destroyed, so I completely failed. So, I wasn't paying attention, I let something slip by, and I failed the mission. I won't always... Hold on. Our fleet is evacuated. I won't always post failed attempts, so I'll usually cut them out. Um, but if it's one on something that's a little bit shorter, like this, or if it's something really funny, then I'll leave it in. But usually if I fail, I'll just cut it out and jump right to my, you know, hey, so this is my third time trying this. Or if it's like one of the other ones later on, this is my sixth time trying this mission. But, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way, because if I could lower the difficulty, I don't think I would. It's a lot more satisfying to be able to succeed when it's as difficult as it is. Um, I know in TIE Fighter, you can set the difficulty to either easy, medium, or hard, and I always play on hard mode. Not only because it's more satisfying, but you have more mission objectives that you have to do, so it's also more rewarding in that way. Because on easy, you know, maybe you'll just have one or two really simple things you have to do, but on hard, you'll have your main obje your normal main objectives, plus any number of bonus objectives that get you extra points or extra whatever. So. Don't expect me to pass anything on the first try, unless it's, you know, like the first two missions where it was really simple. I mean, this mission is simple too, but, you know, you gotta make sure you got your eye on everything, and that's not always 
easy. I mean, I don't think anybody has a time when they don't have trouble with that. But, yeah, um... Never a wise decision to be that close to a Star Destroyer. But, I make it work. Because, as you can see, I'm not dead. This TIE Bomber's about to be dead, but I'm not dead. Maybe? There we go. So this time, I had my wingman attack the fighter that slipped past me. So that's just what I'm keeping my eye on right there. Roger, using designated target. I don't know why I'm bobbing and weaving though, I was way out of the Star Destroyer's range. So hopefully, if my wingman is doing his job, then the shuttles should be fine. And I can hopefully concentrate on the fighters that are near me. Oh, that's why I had my shields on full rear, because I was making sure that if there was anything right behind me that I would be protected from it. But my wingman did his job. Right there. <laughs> and the shuttles should be fine, because there aren't any fighters anywhere near them. They're both near me. I didn't remember that. So now all I really have to do is keep shooting them down as they keep coming out, and uh... Ha! <laughs> Sucker. And uh, everything will be fine. Ace in the hole. Oh, wait, no, I didn't need to with that one. That one I did. There we go. Well, sucks to be you. Sucks to be you, too. <laughs> Roger, using designated target. Now I just got a couple more bombers. Took a laser to the face, but that's okay. That's what shields are for. That's why I prefer X-Wings over TIE Fighters. But I have to admit, flying in a TIE Fighter can actually be kind of fun. There won't be any of that for a while. Okay, so it looks like our shuttles are escaping. And that guy went bye-bye. Okay, so I think it was at this point... I wasn't sure if the Corvette also needed to complete its mission. But the shuttles are gone. The shuttles are out of here. So at this point I was just waiting to see if I needed to wait for the Corvette or if I was good to get out. And that message thing at the bottom there, not telling me things immediately, it's kind of a pain sometimes. Especially if I'm in a thing that doesn't have an R2 unit that beeps at me when the mission's complete. 
that all of them have entered hyperspace, so... My gut instinct was correct. Let's get out of here. Ah, uh, I love these little metal ceremonies. Congratulations on behalf of the Rebel Alliance. I'll explain this in just a minute here. So, yay, there we go. We succeeded. Yeah, 27% accuracy. So, anyway, the Kalidor Crescent is what that thing is called, as you can see there. And uh, I can't remember if it's because I passed that specific mission, or if it's because of my overall score, but eventually you can get other things added to it that do happen because of your score. So, we'll see. I can't really remember, but... Anyway, that just about does it for this one. Sorry again that I had to narrate over everything because I was a doof and forgot to unmute my microphone. But anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope uh, that this becomes a good series that people will enjoy, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.